Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us. If you're just joining the program, it's still Cosmopolitan Markets. And I still have with me in the studio Dr. Regina Inem. She's the Secretary General of the Organization of Women in International Trade. And just before we went on that break, she was telling me about her expectations for from Dr. Ngozi okonjo iweala as the head of the WTO, and particularly concerning the fact that we now have a woman heading the WTO. Please land on your thoughts. Okay. Um... As I said earlier, it will be a milestone for us to um, ensure that we have more women inclusion yes. in international trade. Yes. As I said also, we have a lot of women in the informal sector in trading and women are still in abject poverty. Okay. And we all know that when you empower a woman, the community, the nation is empowered. So. Um, more women in international trade is very vital at this time. Also in um, trade agreements, um, if you look at the um, bilateral trade ag agreements, even the AFTER yes. and all the regional trade agreements, you will see that um, women uh, um, is being downplayed yes. in there. So I think if there is a clause or there is a... Uh, uh, um, a restructure or even in the implementation to ensure more women involvement in international trade. It will go you know, a long way to pushing women out there and helping them um, boost you know, their economy and the livelihood. I also want you to say, you just mentioned the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Now we, we know that has kicked off. How yes. do you, can, you, can you give me like an appraisal of how it has been for women, women traders basically in, in Nigeria and Africa? Now, um, the problem still lies in, uh, we have some challenges on ground. Yes. Africa is a consuming nation. True. Nigeria basically is a consuming nation. We have a lot of women in trade, but how many of them actually take their product out? How many of this, uh, um, the uh, Western world are interested in having our products? Mm. Now, we see that, um, let, let's take cassava for example. Yes, the, yes. The, the, the farmer cultivates the cassava and sells the cassava. You know, when you sell raw cassava, you will not make as much as if you process yes. it. So what we have in Nigeria is that we have infrastructure, infrastructural um, challenges or deficits. Mm -hmm. So we are exporting in the raw state and not adding value. And this is affecting the Nigerian woman. And this is affecting even our economy. So I, I, I think um, if we can help have um, processing hubs, for these women, mm -hmm. when they harvest, let's say they harvest tomato, they can't really store, they don't have storage facility, they can actually process this thing to the puree. It will actually help, and we cannot export this. This will help, you know, boost the economy and also boost the economy of the Nigerian woman. And, and outside that, you know, um, the um, Ugozi um, Okojaiwela as the DJ, if she can also bring in investors to invest in machineries, to invest in um, processing hubs, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa, it will really go a long way because we, that is a major challenge. Now, coming to Nigeria, even if you bring in the processing hub or you bring in the factories and all that, you know yes. we have light issues, power challenges. <laughs> power challenges. So, at home here, we need to fix that so that um, per adventure she brings in investors that can invest in our economy will be able to, you know, sustain this investment in the country. And this will go a long way to helping women. So we so also have to be ready. We have to be ready. We have our parts to play. So in helping women, one, we have to ensure that women are considered in these agreements. Because there is no clause, there is nothing giving preference to women. And, you know, when, you know, women already are the weaker, you know, that's what they call us. Yes, we're <laughs> You know, and we, tag we have refused to accept. We, yes, yes, we have received, refused to accept that. Yeah. Now, we are not given the chance. And male, the, 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 the male gender has dominated this industry. Mm -hmm. If there is a clause that says that there is a percentage, just a certain percentage of women should be involved in international trade, trade. it will um, serve as an opening for more women inclusion in international trade and more women will be empowered. But as it is now, 
most of the women in trade are all in the informal sector and their income is nothing to write home about and um, this is affecting not just the women but it's also affecting our economy. So I think we need to um, put that in and the policy. And outside that, we see that uh, women representation in this policy formulation, implementation mm -hmm. is quite slim. Yes. We don't get to see a lot of women there. We have the Nigerian Export um, Promotion Council. Council. How many women organizations are represented there? We don't have any. So if we can have women organizations involved in what matters to us, you know, involved in trade, involved in businesses and, and in the implementation of these things, it will go a long way to helping women come up. And I can assure if we have women, you know, in, in, in the implementation process, in, in part of the organization of, of, this, uh, of the uh, bodies that govern trade, it will go a long way because we see um, Dr. Um, Ngazi thriving. Amina Mohammed thriving. Women are breaking grounds out there. So allowing women to come in will actually help the economy. There's an economy of the world I really love so much. If you look at um, Sweden, you see the women inclusion in, govern in governance and business, and it has helped this economy grow. Mm -hmm. So if we have that more women in Africa, it will help. A woman coming out even to be a governor, you say, oh, this woman, how do you want to, you know? Stereotyped. It's stereotyped, yes. So I think um, women should be given more chance in trade, in businesses, and in governance. Now, I want to ask you, now, you mentioned the NEPCs, the agency is basically in charge of trade, yes. trade of, of, of the trade sector. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we know we have the Minister of State for Industry, Trade, and Investment, Miriam Katagum, as a woman. Now, your organization is more of private. It's largely private sector driven. So I want to ask, has there been some kind of collaboration, partnership, or interaction with these agencies to come on board and probably work with you? Because... Most times, organizations like yours work with women at grassroots level. Yes, exactly. And you know, you have first-hand information about what's happening and what the experience is really like for these women. Yes, yes. Um, we've not been able to work with um, the government. However, we are pushing towards it. Uh, we've had um, a couple of interactions with the um, Nigerian Promotion, um, Export, Promotion Export, Export Promotion Council, and we're still pushing. Yes. However... Um, we've not, um, there's no headway yet, but it's, it's in the process. Yes. However, what we have done is to still go ahead to see how we can help women at the grassroots. Mm -hmm. Because this is very paramount. A lot of women at the grassroots, they don't even know the procedure of exporting or the certifications Yes, I was going to come to involved. that, so I'm glad you've put that <laughs> on the table. You know, and the certifications involved. So they need a lot of sensitization, a lot of training. Even the actor we're talking about, it's mm -hmm. only the elite women that are really aware of this. The grassroots women are not aware of the, the benefit of actor. So um, what we have done is to um, run sensitization program. In January, we had one, you know, and last year also we've been, you know, trying to um, network with women at the grassroots. And presently we're working with some other private organization in Nigeria to see how we can actually go out there and train those women. Yes. We are aware that we cannot wait for government to do everything. Totally correct. However, it is important that government identify those women organizations that would actually help push our economy mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, call us and um, partner with, with us so that we can, you know, go to the grassroots, equip those women and also, you know, uh, um, teach them how to trade and um, also put them through the various certifications they need to know and how to even um, produce some of these things. Now, I internationally, most times they don't accept our products out there. Yes. It's because certain standards are required. Mm -hmm. Now, these women don't know these standards. So we need to go out there to tell them these are the standards and we need to teach them. So the government need to you know, partner with us Call us, you know, on board and see how we can help them do this yeah. and boost our economy. I want to, I'm, I'm still very particular about the work around sensitization you're doing, especially at the grassroots level, because 
I'm, I'm from my state. I get to go to my village, and I see the kind of hard work women put in exactly. when they go to the farm, the farms. Like I, I like the fact that you use the cassava as an example. They go to the farm, bring the, this, this cassava. They peel them. Those that have to sit by the fire to fry exactly. it yeah. for so dairy consumption. Exactly. So that, the, that whole process that women have to go through. Now, are there some other challenges? For instance, challenges at the home front that limits women participation in trade. Now, from the home front, sometimes for some women, when they are breadwinners, they, their husband might not be, you know, give them the full support. Mm -hmm. But the way our economy is running, even the men will say, please go make the money. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> you know, so in the home, you know, at the home front, I don't see them having much difficulties. Okay. Okay. The major difficulty is the finance to actually to these businesses, then the um, facility, the infrastructure to actually make their work easy. Yes. The other day I was looking at, I was watching a video and I saw um, the Chinese bringing in some uh, um, equipment for Gary processing. Yes. Now, instead of allowing China to bring that, we can as well do that because we have a university of agriculture, we have a research institute that has to do with agriculture, yes. we have uh, Nigerians that can actually fabricate those things. So it would be nice for us to do these things, then take it to the women, to those women, you know, in the grassroots, and that's say, oh, instead of peeling, frying, yeah. drying, this is a Make more a efficient yes. way of doing this, you know. So we're not teach them, okay, after doing it, you can package it this way, and it will be export ready. Because Gabi is being exported every day. Yeah. But the amazing part of it is that who are the exporters of this Gary? Mm -hmm. I can assure you that he's a foreigner, even, even in our lands. Even in our land. So it, that's what uh, it, the, another issue I would like to even bring here is um, the trade agreement we have in Nigeria. There should be a policy in place and it should be implemented. When foreigners come, they should follow the procedure. In other countries, we can't even go to Ghana and go into their lands, farm, take their produce, um, take it to our, our country, refine it, and send it back to Ghana at times of three the price. We can't do that mm. because they have policies in place. So in Nigeria too, there should be policy in place, you know, where uh, foreigners don't just come and um, take our farmlands. If you go to Obomosho, inside of Obomosho, we see Indians are there. Mm. Taking over our um, cashew nut plantations. They are the one exporting these things. Why our farmers are still in abject poverty? So the women are working so hard. The foreigners are coming and buying at peanut prices. They take it out of the country. They process it and bring it back times five the price. And our economy is declining by the second. Mm -hmm. So I believe what I would like to say is, um, I'm very happy the DG of WTO, who is a Nigerian, that understand the Nigerian process is there. I think the onions lies on her to come back home and see how she can support international trade in Nigeria, having the women in focus. Because I can assure you, if you, you put more women into this, the homes will enjoy. You know, in, in, in a lot of homes, when you see the man as breadwinners, you know, they have a girlfriend, you know, they'll give the money to and all that. <laughs> but <laughs> the men will not want to agree with you on that, too. <laughs> but a woman will, all the resources gotten will be used for the home. Yeah. So it's very important. Act, but we have a major problem. The problem, one, training sensitization and that's where OWIT Nigeria comes into play. The government the government needs to partner with women owned or organization yeah. or associations like us that have the expertise to help them. We go to the grassroots and we educate those women on the right uh, um, um, standards of these goods. And also the government can also encourage you know production hubs because it is always best to export um, our produce, especially agricultural produce, mm -hmm. when um, value has been added. When it is exported in the raw state, it will not bring profit. 
And that's why you see the, 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 the Europeans will come here, they will take our cocoa, they come back with chocolate, and yes. their economy is thriving, and our economy is going down. So they need to work with us in training those women and helping them. But the government also needs to put in place, maybe the, uh, they need to bring in investors or they need to encourage our youth. Our youth are jobless, but they, can, you know, they are jobless because the, 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 the finance and the, the drive to put them where they're supposed to be is not there. I know that the government is trying bringing out money, this funds, that funds, but I think we should be more intentional and purposive in this funds that we bring out or that we roll out. The, 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 the youth that are very good in machineries, they should be able to produce machines that will be able to help in producing, in processing agricultural products. Then the trade part of it, the government should put should uh, um, send out um, people out there to ensure that foreigners don't milk us dry. Because in the sector, that is what is happening. Everything you can think of in Nigeria is done by the foreigners. They come in, they study the challenge we're having. They come into our economy. They provide the solution and take it out there and bring back the, the solution to us times three. Ethanol is another thing. You know, ethanol is gotten from cassava. Yes. Now, when... This ethanol is, uh, uh, um, I mean, the cassava is produced. Oh, yes. They take it outside. They extract the ethanol and bring it back to Nigeria at times under the price. We export about 98% of the ethanol used in this country. Mm. But the raw material is gotten from Nigeria. So why can't we? We have, The women are slaving, planting cassava. Cassava is a rich crop that can turn Nigeria into a multi-billion, in short, we will leave the state of um, being a third world country, only with cassava. So I, 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 I think the, we all need to wake up. The government needs to wake up. Everybody needs to wake up, you know. And uh, uh, their beautiful um, Okonjawela out there also need to be focused at home because we are all looking up to our at this time to use a good office and ensure that the government, they do the right thing. Investors coming in is fine. However, there's something we have noticed. Mm -hmm. It is always best that um, trade organizations like us work with this investor too um, in, in, in the implementation stage. Why? We've noticed that government having a role in the implementation open room for um, corruption. Okay. And that is, you know, stalling a lot of things. So I would say trade associations like us, we are very important at this time because we really need to bring our economy back. We don't have any other home than Nigeria. Okay. So we should be purposive and intentional in doing this and um, help those women produce add value, and we help them export. One of the things our organization does is we um, connect um, Nigerian women with buyers internationally. We have trade fairs with um, company it, it, organization in Europe. We just finished one in January that we connected some Nigerian um, export-ready women to the European market. Um, yesterday, we had a letter from um, the TFO in Canada. Mm -hmm. They are looking for export-ready Nigerian women to penetrate the Canadian markets. Mm. So those are some of the things we do. So we are ready to um, push these women Basically into the... Propel them. Propel them into the international market. However, we need the support of the government to be able to do this. We need to be in those places where these policies are made. It's just like they're making trade policies about you and you're not there. And men, majority of the people there are men. So the, the women, uh, uh, um, um, can I say, what will affect the women is not being captured there. Mm -hmm. So inclusive um, representation yeah. 
is very important also. I'm glad you spoke about the work, the enormous work your organization is doing, especially to ensure that there's a connection and market access for women in trade in Nigeria. Now, is there like a number to how many women we ha that the organization has been able to connect to the, the broader markets, that's the global market, and also states that you have been able to reach? Okay, now um, we've been able to reach Edo State. Okay. And um, Lagos, we're working with women there. Then we have um, another of uh, um, Oyo, okay. because we have the share water um, yes. part of it there. So we've been able to meet women, you know, rich women in the states. However, we are looking at expanding. Our organization have chapters in all the states in Nigeria. So um, women in the different states can actually assess us through the coordinators of the different states. Then um, access to international markets. We've been able to help um, a lot of women. I don't have the figures up there, sure. so okay. I don't um, give a wrong figure. Yeah. We've been able to um, help a lot of women market their you know, should, uh, you know, connect them with investors. Yes. And we have in partnership with um, organizations um, in the U.S. especially, because our organization is the U, the, the, the um, mother body of this organization is based in the U.S. So we work closely with the um, U.S. government, and um, they're also trying to see how, you know, most of our products can, can also penetrate the U.S. The US market. markets. Yes. In time past, we had some of our products that were in the U.S. market. Other um, countries came and, you know, took over. But yeah. now we are determined to also boost that again and we are in talks we are, we have a meeting for like two weeks with um, the body in, in the US to ensuring this so the Europe market too we have um, organizations that we work with aside that um, we also work with um, the she trades in the Commonwealth you know they are also we, we, we are one of the uh, business support organization with them that um, um, help in bringing women you know facilitate trade in Nigeria. Okay, I want to also talk about the issue because I've had people reach out to me, especially young women like myself, saying, oh, I want to go into export business. I want to go into, I want to be able to export this out of Nigeria. It's not just a man that must be someone that goes yeah. to the ports to clear <laughs> containers. I want to be active <laughs> in that sector. Now, what are some of the opportunities that you think are there for women? Trading opportunities now, particularly. Okay. Now, we have women, you might not necessarily be the farmer, let me go in the agri route, sure, <laughs> or the textile industry might not necessarily be the person sewing. You can have access to market. Once you have access to market, what you do is that you need to meet certain standards. Those standards are quite, are the things limiting a lot of women, you know, from being able to export. So you meet those standards, and will connect you to the market. So if you are a woman out there and um, you want to export, you can reach us, you can go to our website and contact us, our numbers are there. You could also register to become a member of OIT Nigeria and um, we'll be glad to put um, you through, we'll be glad to assist you in any way to take, taking your product outside um, the country. Now let's, let's also look at now, what role does gender equality? Will gender, will gender equality being in the conversation also help tackle some of these challenges you're talking about? Yes, absolutely. Because there's a gender imbalance in policy making, policy implementation. It is causing a lot of challenge mm -hmm. in women involved in trade. So I would advise that... Um, the government, especially um, those agencies yes. in the government that has to do with trade, they should work with women trade associations because we are closer to these women. We know their problems. We know the challenges. Yes. And we'll be a better, you know, we, we can relate more with them and speak their language sure. too, sure. you know. Yes. So it's best that... Um, we have the, the government have a representative, a, a representative yes. there of this um, um, 
women organization. In Nigeria, we don't have a lot of women organization in international trade. I think mm -hmm. OWIT is the only women organization in international trade. So when it comes to international trade, international businesses, I would say that the government should, um, we are ready to work with the government to um, helping facilitate um, trade in Nigeria. Okay, I want to look at it, it issues around protection now. Now, around the border towns, I was having a conversation with uh, one, of, one of the professors in trade recently, and he was telling me about a research he saw, whereby we understand that a lot of trade being done, done by women is largely informal, and you have rightly stated that. And he, spoke, he, he was speaking to some issues around protecting women that trade, especially in border towns, that there's a research he saw about high rate of infections and diseases among women who trade in border towns because there, there are some rigorous processes that women that traders generally let me not say women now traders have to go through what, what are your thoughts on protecting women traders or women in trade around border areas especially um this issue has been a pain in the neck for a while and we've been looking at these issues mm -hmm. and um, for us we had a meeting about this last year and uh, we are planning to uh, meet with the customs oh, to fix in this. One, a lot of women don't know what is required at these borders. Okay. So they go with one paper deficit or the other, you know. Okay. And in other, because they are dogged, they still want to pass this thing, you know, to the other country. They are raped. All mm -hmm. kinds of things happen. They are extorted for something that would have been free they've been ex because they don't even know you know yes. knowledge is power yes, information true. is key and we we decided that we should do well we're going to do a sensitization in not just the semi-border but in the border in you know niger republic yes, and yes. you do leaflets in in the languages of the true. different nigerian language so that they know what is required and how they can go about this process because the process are not even hard. It's because of lack of information. So what we are looking, what we'll say is the government can also do this. But as I said, we can't wait for the government. The government mm -hmm. can contact us. We are ready to do this project. Actually, we're trying to do that project. We're trying to get funds from an international organization to actually do that project because we know what these women go through, the pains. Sometimes in the, in the bid to you know, not be caught, they sleep in the bushes and all those terrible, you know, they, they endanger their lives, you know. So um, one is sensitization, information is key. Informa these women don't have this information. So again, the customs, they have a lot of work to do. Have you been able to, have you, have you probably started an engagement with the Nigeria Customs Service on this? probably just engaging them and know where probably the role they can play and how they can also come in to help tackle this challenge. As an organization now, I mean. Um, we, as I said earlier, we've had meetings okay. and um, we, are, we are looking at, you know, starting this okay. process okay. because we're okay. looking at not just speaking to the, yes. you know, the customs, we're also looking at, you know, solving the problem, yeah. getting the, tr you know, the track, the, the, um, educational um, <laughs> seminars yes. to talk to them and all that and all this thing cost money yes. you know so we now that you've mentioned that we'll go back home and we'll engage the nigerian customs firstly and um, hopefully um, it will be peaceful and we'll take it from there okay okay so let's have your final thoughts on all we have been discussing so much you really said so we've said so much today about how the role women play in trade development and also going forward we are in a new year we're in the month of february in 2021 what are your expectations and also what are you looking forward to especially in terms of trade, trade development we know we have one of the big wins already with the wto the emergence of dr ngozi okonjoy well as head of the wto what are your expectations as we round off the program okay um the first expectation is having gender representation okay in policy making policy implementation of trade. Two is to have a clause or a verse in those in the agreement that has already been made, mm -hmm. especially in the after and other regional agreement, voting a percentage of women that is expected in international trade. Yeah. So I think that that, that that's the second one. 
then the third one is I'm looking forward to having Africa becoming a producing continent and not a consuming continent. And I'm looking forward deeply to seeing Dr. Gozi make that huge effort to industrialize Africa so that our raw materials are being produced here. We don't need to import anything from outside Africa. We have the resources. We are rich. We have the manpower. We have the resources. So in putting those things in place that we all, all the nations in Africa, not just Nigeria, will become a processing and a producing nation. Now, again, if all cannot become a you know, processing hub, we can collaborate with each other. Yeah. For example, since Ghana already have stable electricity, we can have the processing hubs there. Then we take goods from Nigeria. We have this agreement. Mm -hmm. We take goods from Nigeria. We go process there. Then we now export. So having you know, this being put in place this year is those things we would like to say. And finally, we want to see OWID Nigeria as since we are the only um, women-based organization in international trade, yes. you know, having a place in um, trade discussions in Nigeria and other trade agencies in Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the program with me today. I have been speaking with Dr. Regina Inem on the program today. She's the Secretary General of the Organization of Women in International Trade, Nigeria. It's a pleasure to have you on the program today, Thank Ma. you so much. And that's where we wrap up the program today, Cosmopolitan Market, of course. I hope you have been able to take one or two things away. And like Dr. Inem said, you can go to the OWIT website for more information. You want to go into trade as a young woman. They have all, the, all you need. And they can also connect you to international markets, which is very, very critical at this time you want to get your goods out you want to what your product you want to get it to the international market you want it to be seen more of course you can go to their website for more information she has said a lot about how getting women into the trade front will definitely help add more value to nigerians economy thank you for being part of the program today and remember like i always say the gospel i always preach on cosmopolitan market is covid 19 is real you have to stay safe wear a mask to protect yourself and protect others use your hand sanitizers maintain social distancing it is very very important for us to fight this monster we all have to take responsibility my name is christiana amodu the news is up next <music>